All right, I'm here with Ray Brinzer. Ray, how's it going? What brings you to Columbus today? Oh, it's going well, thank you. And uh, I'm here for the Central Regional, which is Pennsylvania is not part of the Central Regional region, so we just kind of invaded. We're we're uninvited guests, party crashers. <laughs> All right, uh, what's Ray Brinzer up to right now? What, what are you What are you doing? What are you running? What's your club? Uh, my club is the Angry Fish Wrestling Club, and we're doing our freestyle and Greco season. We're going to tournaments and, uh, you know, generally trying to make okay wrestlers into good wrestlers and that sort of thing. You know. All right. Uh, what are you up to? A lot of people, they don't know. A lot of people are like, so what does Ray Brinzer do for a living? What are you up to for a living now? Um, Oh, you know, you know, collect welfare and, you know, uh, it, like pick through people's garbage, that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> there is my destiny in life. Um, I also do some computer programming, uh, and I've been moving more toward that. In the last couple of years, I've been very heavily focused on uh, trying to make a little business out of wrestling, which has gone okay. Um, but now I've got a son, and we're expecting... Uh, a second child a girl coming in October and uh, so I'm moving back more toward the computer realm because it tends to be more lucrative um, so reevaluating where I am in wrestling okay uh, send money <laughs> People, I, you can I'll give you my address just send money <laughs> all right tell us about your journey from North Allegheny High School okay okay to Oklahoma State Right. To Bulgaria, right. to Iowa. Well, that, that went uh, west and then east and then <laughs> west again. Um, <clears throat> wrestled, for, wrestled for North Allegheny High School. Um, you know, got out of there, signed with Oklahoma State because, you know, I had Kenny Mundy as a workout partner and that sort of thing. It was really pretty impressive coaching staff. Um, what was your uh, Pennsylvania credentials, like state placements and stuff? Um, I won states three times. I won junior nationals three times. Um, that's most of it. You know. um, so then I go to Oki State and spend a year there. And, you know, I mean, to me, my performance was disappointing there. But, uh, you know, people seem to think, wow, you're a freshman. That's fine. So... And uh, then Okie State got in a whole lot of trouble with the NCAA, and uh, I was looking to do something different anyway. So I took the next year off. Uh, first, went went out to Colorado Springs, uh, did a whole lot of judo at the Olympic Trainer, uh, the uh, their National Judo Institute, and then I went to Bulgaria. Um, went spent time over there, wrestled with their Greco guys, came back. Uh, tried out, you know, went to the Olympic trials, all that kind of thing, and then um, went to Iowa from there, so. Talk about uh, your career at Iowa and how it was a better fit for you at Iowa as opposed to Oklahoma State. Okay, well at Iowa, I lost and then I lost and I lost. So that was my three years. Um, and... What were your NCAA placements for uh, Well, I took Hawkeyes? third as a sophomore and uh, then junior year, just didn't go kind of real well. I mean, I, it was a, going a, a good year, but then the actual tournament went badly. I didn't place, and then uh, I took third again my senior year. So, uh, you know, pretty much clean streak there. Um, and yeah, you know, there's, uh, you know, positive atmosphere. It's just like Iowa seemed to be a better fit in a lot of ways, um, and I really. You know, that's where I really got into the college atmosphere, which is something I think I should have had a long time before that. You know, it was a, Iowa, Iowa City is a fun place to be, and so that, that was kind of how that went. Um, you know, met a lot of people, made, you know, had good friends, all that kind of thing. It was, it was a good time. What was your, uh, then you went on and you did the freestyle circuit, and you were a U.S. national team member, well, you know, mostly, being top three. Mostly Greco, actually, at okay. that point. Uh, I did, you know, I, I keep going back and forth, you know, I never could figure out which one I like better. Um, but yeah, I did, um, went back to Bulgaria and then um, I was there, was going to stay there for quite a while. I, I've had this happen a bunch of times where I think I'm going to stay someplace and then I don't. And uh, I was there for a while, Dave Schultz died and, you know, that was, a, just blew everything up and I came back and really kind of wanted to quit wrestling there because that seemed to suck all the joy out of it. And um, 
But then I wound up at the Olympic Training Center, spent about three years there, and then I went back to Iowa for a while, and then, uh, then you know, things wrapped up in 2000. So that was, that was my wrestling career, 79 to 2000. Rest so in peace. After 2000, is this when you came back to the Pittsburgh area? Yeah, again, um, again, a transition made kind of in an unfortunate way. My, uh, my sister's husband died very young, and uh, so I came back and helped her uh, raise my nephew. And then I, I just kind of never left. So I've been in, in Pittsburgh around my family ever since. And right around that time, I started the wrestling club. So the Angry Fish came into being, and uh, you know, running, trying to make a business out of it. You know, I find, you know, I just found out that you can't really go too far if you're actually trying to run a business and be a grown-up about it. So I really got nailed into one place for a good while. So you, out of complete selflessness, left wrestling essentially to come back and help your sister? Um, I don't know what I'd go quite so far as that. I certainly came back to Pittsburgh uh, for that reason. And it, it's not, I mean, it's not a matter of selflessness. It's family, you know. It's... it's you can make too much of that. I think most people do the same sort of thing. Uh, that's a self, for, for me personally, I think that's a pretty well, selfless thing, you know, kind of very, very like humbling and just shows obligation to family. So, well, it, it and, and not what people would think of when they think of Ray Brinzer. Yeah, well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that next. Thanks. They, yeah, they usually think of me as a rotten guy, but you know, every once in a while I do something nice. <laughs> they don't think of you as a rotten guy, but yeah. that's what we want to get into. I want to get into the uh, oh, Ray Brinzer yeah. fact okay. or fiction. Got it. Ray Brinzer, fact or fiction? You're, you're going to tell me and you All can right. give me a little background behind each thing. Okay. Ray Brinzer, fact, had a fact or fiction. Ray Brinzer had a Gumby doll that would corner him. Yes, actually, that's true. Uh, and that's pretty well known because everybody saw it. Um, that started off as a joke. And, and really ended up as a joke. I, uh, I was in, I think, sixth grade when Eddie Murphy did his Gumby skit on Saturday Night Live, and I really thought it was funny. And I got one of those 12-inch uh, foam rubber dolls. And then I just thought it was cool. I'd keep it in my backpack when I, and I went to tournaments. And um, Different era. You know, we used to, I used to go to tournaments alone. I would actually catch rides with people I scarcely knew, and I would go and you know, these days they won't even let you wrestle without a coach in the corner most of the time. I virtually never had a coach in the corner. I was just going to whatever I could get to. Uh, it was every weekend. And so one of, one of those days I'm just kind of sitting there and getting ready for a match. And I'm lo I look at the chair where the, my coach is supposed to be, kind of look at my backpack, see Gumby. It's like, okay, you know, <laughs> put him there. And, you know, and that was like, I got this, <laughs> this coach waving at me. And, um, and I just, it was like a one-off joke. I thought it was funny. And then people completely freaked out. You know, they're like, you know, the, the junior high wrestling crowd is not uh, used to anything interesting, I guess. So, you know, I started getting this big reaction. And like a little kid, I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. You know, and so next thing you know, I'm, I'm doing uh, freestyle tournaments. There's a break between the periods. And, you know, I'd, I'd come over, I'd come back to the chair, I'd sit down and be like, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so too. So people yeah. thought you were oh, completely off oh, your rocker. And so right? then I start talking to the doll, and I'm seeing guys in the other corner going, "Oh my God, he's talking to it!" Oh, and I'm like, "This is this is great. It's like free money." I'm freaking out my opponents, and you know, I go look at the wall charts, and I hear I hear somebody going like, "I got that Brinzer guy. He talks to a doll. I don't want to wrestle him. You know, <laughs> he's nuts." And so I was like, "Hey, this is fun," you know, and. Uh, so that that was that was Gumby. I mean, it was it was a, a joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Factor Fitchin, you warmed up in a leather jacket. A leather? I warmed up in whatever I had on, <laughs> to the extent that I warmed up at all. Uh, so so no, not really. I mean, Fitchin. Uh, yeah, I you warmed a, up in whatever I, well, jeans. It, 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 it's probably fact because I, I, you know, out of the thousands of matches I've had, I can guarantee at some point I warmed up in a leather jacket, but. You know, no, I mean, I didn't have any particular gear I really used, so, nah. I didn't okay, even, I didn't, usually, whatever. I usually didn't warm up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is a story I heard. Okay. Uh, one time, somebody said they were at a regional. They, I, that's you true. That's true. Stepped, that's, they uh, were yeah, at somebody a was at a regional. Okay. Uh, I think it was Lacrosse or Brockport. Okay. You stepped on the scale, you had a t-shirt, and 
like maybe like spandex on. Uh -huh. And then you were two tenths of a pound over, and they said, uh, "Step off, take your t-shirt off." And you said, "I'll wrestle the weight that I weigh." Did this, did this ever happen? This um, is fact or fiction? You know what? Again, I I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> um, like, you know, it all runs together. I've had I, I've started wrestling in second grade, and from about third grade on, I did folk style every weekend through the winter. Started judo in sixth grade, that took up my fall, and by seventh grade I was doing freestyle, Greco, uh, judo, and folk style, and every weekend I could pack a tournament into it, I was at one, and you, a lot of them it was like I'd have one Saturday and I'd have one Sunday. So, did I do that? I, I, almost 100%, you know, yeah, I would, I would say at some point I did that. Um, who cares, you know? <laughs> Americans worry too much about their weight anyway. It's, you just go wrestle and, you know, if you're, if you're training right, um, you know, you do strength train, that sort of thing, you should be good to go. What makes you one of the unique characters in, in wrestling? Uh, you know, putting you with like a Brian Dolph or like a Ryan Lang, what makes you guys so unique and why, why, why just the creative personalities and spontaneous I mean th those people are out there you know it's just I think they gravitate toward wrestling you know uh, it, it's it welcomes individuals you don't really have to fit in with a team you know you're you, you know it's like it's it's just a really good sport for that so it's not so much you know I don't think wrestling makes individuals from individuals usually seek out wrestling so, okay. so just they gravitate to it because it's pretty sure. individual yeah, absolutely. It, it's a great place for stuff like, you know, people like us. Tell me your best Iowa Hawkeye, Dave Schultz. You pick a story, I want to hear it. A good pick, Ray Brinzer Pick a story. story. Um, okay. Gee, then. <laughs> Did I catch you? Uh, well, I, I have to filter through, like, which ones are uh, probably inappropriate for mass consumption. <laughs> uh, I... Ugh, let's see, joining Team Foxcatcher. I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, I um, I went to Bulgaria, as I said, when I was um, I think I was still 19 at that point. I, I'd been done with Oklahoma State. I had no money whatsoever, and I wound up uh, staying in a judo player's place on his sofa out in Colorado Springs, training judo every day. And my dad then finally came up with some money for me and I packed up everything and I had I was going to go to Russia and train over there I was a huge fan of the uh, Soviets and um, but then they had a coup d'etat that summer so it seemed like a bad idea to go there and uh, yeah. I, I went I went to Bulgaria instead tiny country with a really great success uh, especially in Greco and so you know I, I wind up with uh, a one-way ticket to Istanbul Turkey which is what, what I could afford and uh, a, a, we sent over a fax from USA Wrestling getting an introduction. They, you know, they asked if I could come over and train, and the Bulgarian said, yeah, well, whatever. And um, so I, we kind of took that as a positive, and I um, packed up a whole lot of clothes and went. And so I, I fly into Istanbul, and I'm supposed to take a train, and the next, and the next thing I find is there are no trains leaving for three days. Um, and so I take a bus. Uh, make my way to the bus grounds. They're, the only bus that's going is to Plovdiv, and I'm trying to get to Sofia. So I, I get this bus through the middle of the night. They stop us on the border. They're, they do the passport check, and then they, they find me. They're like, you know, just a bunch of, they're gypsies, Turks, Bulgarians, and me. And so they, they hold up the bus, and they're like, what the hell is this guy doing here? You know, he's obviously a drug smuggler or something. And so they You're search, 19. Yeah, they search. <laughs> well, I'm 19 with a full beard and a lot of hair, and so they, they search. Were, were the glasses there then? Yeah, I got LASIK in, you know, 2001 or 2002 or something. So, you know, up until then I had the big chunky glasses that <laughs> broke all the time. Um, and... So we, I, I finally get to Plovdiv, and I catch a ride with a guy. We take a taxi for about an hour, and I think it cost me maybe three bucks. Um, get to Sofia at about six in the morning, and I go to the Sport Palace, which is their central command for uh, all sports. And I really the only thing I knew was Borba, which is wrestling. So I just showed up, and I went to the little gate, and I was like, Borba, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know and I'm like, Borba, 
Borba, me, Borba, you know, and he's like, yeah. he gets on the phone and he calls up the wrestlers and he says, uh, probably like, there's some idiot here saying wrestling, 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 and so they, the wrestlers show up and you can tell when they show up, they're looking at me, they, they greet me and then they, they're talking and one of them goes like, hey, didn't we get a fax about something like this? And, and you know, they're like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you couldn't tell what they were saying, but that was the gist of it. And so, next thing, I'm I'm in uh, I'm in this hotel, and I'm in the national team training camp. And um, then, what I, I made friends, uh, you know, met a guy named Ivan Ivanov, who is now the uh, you know now the uh, coach at the um, national education center. He, he wound up being a world silver medalist several years after this. And Yvonne and I become friends, and he speaks virtually no English, but he speaks more than everybody else there. And after after a while, you know, he comes to me. I've been there about eight days. I'm happy. I'm training. You know, I'm having a blast. And he says, they're charging you for being here. And I said, well, <laughs> You had no clue? I had no idea. They're like, well, how much? And he's like, I think it's $40 a day. And I'm like, $40? I only have five hundred dollars, and I have no ticket home. Like I, I can't do that. And so Yvonne completely goes to bat for me. Goes down, takes me to uh, their federation, and chews out the federation of the Bulgarian, you know, or, or the secretary of the Bulgarian Wrestling Federation because he's ripping off. She's ripping off an American, and she, you know, he's like, "You think these people are all rich? They're not. He doesn't have any money, and this is crap." And you know, he just on totally on principle for being a great guy. He. He just yells at this lady, and so they take most of my money, and then I move into Yvonne's kitchen. And so they then, took your money anyway. They, they took it anyway. Um, <laughs> but but what he did do, it, it got to the point where, as long as I was just training and I wasn't staying there and eating the food or anything like that, um, I, I was able to uh, go for free. So Yvonne had an apartment across town. He got me a cot. I slept in his kitchen. Uh, I took the bus, and of course, by this point, they've taken. I have a little over a hundred dollars left, I think, and I'm going to be there for another um, ten weeks or something like that. And uh, well, well, actually, I wound up being there for another ten weeks. I didn't have a return ticket, so I had no idea when I was going. Back. How did you? Did someone wire you money? Uh, eventually, somebody got me uh, got me a ticket. Uh, one of the one of the kind of sponsors from the NA area back home. My dad went to him. Is it? I guess he said, like, hey, Ray's stuck in Bulgaria and can't get home. Can you help out? Um, so that was nice. I actually flew out of Sofia. but um, No no taxi or bus ride, none of that? You just you got the fly back? Oh, yeah. Like I got, first I, class? That's I, next time. No, right? it wasn't first class. Um, you know, it's funny how often being in wrestling you can wind up flying first class and being in all this stuff when you have no money whatsoever. Like, the NCAA seems to specialize in that where it's like, well, you have to be – you have to be poor. You, we don't let you do anything. You know, don't even look at money. But, ah, uh, you know, here's, you know, he'll put you up in a posh hotel while you're going wrestling. You know, it, it's it's a weird life. Um, but yeah, so I um, I went and I um, I wrestled in the uh, the Nikola Petrov, in, which is in Sofia, and then the the last tournament before I went home, I wrestled in the. Um, the Acropolis Cup. So I just went down with the Bulgarians uh, on the bus into Greece, and we, we were in um, we were in Athens. And the funny thing was, the Bulgarians thought I was terrible uh, because I was great at folk style. Well, relatively, I wasn't actually great, but um, I, you know, but I'd been wrestling since second grade, and I just didn't know what they knew about Greco. And so they're hitting these simple moves on me, like little off balance things I had never seen before. I still almost never see in this country, and I'm falling down, and I'm going, how is this happening? So then they're like, okay, Ray, he's our pet American, but he's terrible, and you know, <laughs> like he's he's cool. And so, I, and so we go to Athens though, and I'm getting better at this. I'm starting to pick it up, and I'm starting to win. And like I win my first match, and the Bulgarians are all like, "Hey, you know, Ray, Ray, you, do, you know, the, the American won one." And then I win my next match, and they're like, "Oh, hey, you know, this is this is good, you know." And then I win my next match, and they're kind of going like, "Huh, <laughs> like that's not supposed to happen, you know?" And I I um, I wind up in the semifinals, and I've got um, I have this fellow from Yugoslavia, and Ivan comes over, and he says, uh, "Hey." 
you know, you, you feel okay? I think you're ready. And I said, yeah. He's like, hey, this guy is pretty tough, you know, but, you know, get ready. And I'm like, ah, I feel good. And I did because this was, I was like the joy of wrestling was back. This was like, I felt like I was a little kid again and I was just, I caught a bus and I went to a tournament. But instead of the kids from Shaler and the kids from Hampton, it was like the kid from Italy and the guy from, you know, like Bulgaria. It was yeah. Bulgaria, but it was it was like that. There was no pressure. It wasn't the grim college season. I was having fun again, and so um, I, it was like I was just having a blast. And I uh, went out and I go after this guy, and I wind up I beat him like ten to three in the semis, and. Um, you know, I'm just like moving, moving, bouncing around, and he does something, and I just catch him and throw him. And you know, the Bulgarians they're standing up, they're like, "Hey, this is incredible!" <laughs> and I get off the mat, and I'm like, "Oh, that good? I felt good, you know." And he's like, "I was like, yeah, yeah, this is good, you know." And he comes to me later, he's like, "Look, I didn't want to tell you this, but that guy is." He's, he's